Hi, everybody. This is Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast Online Radio Network. With me today, Spencer Feldman, the founder and chief technologist at RemedyLink. Today, we're very excited to introduce to you the electron replacement or electron charging device. Well, maybe Spencer will tell us the official name of it. Spencer Feldman, welcome. Hey, Martin. Thanks for having me on. So, you know, I've been involved in uh, this idea about electrons for a while. Um, a couple of years ago, I read a book on grounding. You know, that's the idea of walking barefoot or putting a pad under your bed or where you work that's attached to the earth to get electrons from the earth. And I'm reading this book and it seems amazing. And then I get, I start grounding and I, I don't really notice anything. So I'm trying to figure out what it is. So I'm, I'm doing this research on electrons and they come off the sun. Uh, they travel in the solar wind to get into the earth, uh, which is a giant kind of battery you could call it, right? And uh, we are meant to absorb electrons, the air, through the water, through our food, and through our feet, through the skin. Uh, and one of the things that electrons do is they detoxify. So all the, the electrons in the atmosphere, they're now 20% more positive than, than negative because all the electrons are being used, not all of them, a large number of electrons are being used up to detoxify the atmosphere, the pollution, the chemtrails, all that. Right. So with every breath, rather than getting a charge of electrons, we're actually losing electrons. Yeah. We're meant to get it through our water. Our water you know, comes down mountain streams and waterfalls and it's fully charged, you drink it up. Our water goes through pipes, is reclaimed from sewage and is treated with flocculants. The flocculants strip the electrons off the water to make the water glue itself up so it can be filtered out better. But then we end up drinking the flocculants and no, so we're getting positive charge from our water and our air. Now food, we cook our food and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it kills in, uh, bacteria and parasites, makes it more absorbable, but it also knocks all the electrons off the food. So our food is stripping us of electrons. And then our skin, uh, the main way we're supposed to get electrons is through the earth, through our bare feet. Uh, our meridians are actually electron irrigation system to, tra to transfer electrons to the internal organs. And you take any two materials and rub them together, one will typically take electrons from the other. It's called the triboelectric series. And human skin will give electrons up to anything. Now you might say, well, that's terrible. Why are we designed that way? Well, it's, we're designed to flow. But one of the side effects of flowing is we give electrons up very easily. Uh, so we have been walking around in rubber shoes, rubber you know, uh, bottomed shoes and on carpets uh, and in synthetic clothes. And when we walk on rubber shoes, we don't get the charge from the earth. When we walk on carpets, it actually pulls it out of us. And anytime your skin rubs against a synthetic substance, it loses electrons. So uh, the, the synthetics in the clothing, right? Yeah, uh, yeah the it, classic, you walk up to the uh, door handle, touch it, and bang, right, the that's a, goes off. Right, that's a seven, th in order to do that, we have to be at 7,000 volts positive to, for that charge to happen. So you can see that just in, a, in order to touch a doorknob, the person's already 7,000 volts in, in deficit. So every time someone moves around in clothes and the synthetics rub against their skin, they're losing the electrons to the, to the, to the clothing. Right, you pull the, you pull the uh, artificial fabric sweater over your head and crackle, crackle, pop, pop. When you do it in the dark, you'll see the little lightnings going off. Right, but that's your life force leaving you. <laughs> it's, you know, it's an interesting thing, but it's terrible for you. Yeah. Right, we wanted to go back, we wanted to go in reverse. So I'm thinking, and then you take a look at the electronics, like, you know, the, these, these earplugs, you know. Anytime you have electricity traveling through a wire, it sucks electrons out of the air around it. It creates an electric vacuum behind it. So um, that's the whole problem with the high voltage wires. Um, they pull, they make the air around them highly positive. Now the cows and the plants and the trees don't have a problem because they're touched to, attached to the earth. So they're sucking the electrons back up that they're losing. But you walk under them or live under them on a carpet and wear shoes and then that's why people are getting these cancers. Because cancer is controlled by electricity. Well, we'll get there in a minute. Yeah, yeah elect electron deficiency. Yeah, electron deficiency syndrome, exactly. So um, I kept, I was thinking to myself, well, grounding makes a lot of sense. Why aren't I feeling anything from it? You know, other than subtle. And, you know, I live off grid. So I have a huge battery array uh, that holds the charge from my solar panels. 
and I know that uh, I have to maintain the batteries. If you let a battery drop too low in voltage, it crystallizes, it's uh, lead sulfate. Uh, and so once those crystals form in there, it can't take a charge properly. Yeah, well, I, we're, we all are aware of the fact that batteries, when we use them, charge, discharge, they will not return to the full capacity. They are losing the ability Every time. to hold the full charge that it started when it was new. Right, so the longer you've had a cell phone for, the, the less amount of time it will hold a charge. Now you can recover bad batteries. Uh, what they do for lead acid batteries is a, they put a voltage spike in. Now it's, um, it, when people had quartz watches, what happens is the, the electricity um, goes into the, the quartz and the quartz vibrates and then that gives you your timing for the watch. So there's a principle about crystals called the piezoelectric effect that says if you stress a crystal, it gives electricity. That's how those little lighters work where you click them and they make a little spark. And the opposite, if you put electricity into a crystal, the crystal vibrates. Well, the way that these voltage devices work on batteries to recover them is they cause these voltage spikes that shake the, the crystals so much they just blow up. So I said, maybe the grounding's not working because I can't hold a charge, just like these dead batteries, right? So I built a machine that would pulse electricity into me. Anything that uses electricity is going to strip electrons out of you unless it's specifically designed not to. Uh, you right. know, so I mean, even though there's a lot of great machines out there and they have a lot of wonderful effects, they're also stripping us of electrons. Yeah, it's so like touching your keyboard and notepad and smart. Or use thing like a violet ray or a multi-wave oscillator, things that are otherwise good for you. Well, still, as I tested them, I put electron meters to them. I could see that see they were just pulling electrons off like mad it's, in the process of doing positive that. electric field, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, the first thing is I did is I I made a machine that would pulse electrons into me the same way you could for a car battery, except for the thirty-seven trillion cells that. I made out of them. And so all of this um, junk started coming out of me. And so, you know, th now I, so then the next thing I did is I said, okay, I've, 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 the urine's now clear. I blasted these crystals out. Let me then charge myself. And so uh, I, I put it on a, a steady setting and I let it charge my body. And a number of interesting things happened. Um, when I was young, I did something foolish. You know, I was eating a lot of fruit. And oh, I gave myself Steve Jobs idea. Yeah, and I gave I, like Jobs. I damaged my pancreas, and I gave myself um, a peripheral neuropathy and uh, a peripheral artery disease. So that meant I had very cold feet that were numb for years. Yeah, and I'm using this, and it's sort of like I, I won't get off the machine. It's like trying to tear uh, a guy who's been in a desert for ten days away from a water fountain. I'm on this thing for hours oh, a day. Oh, you were just sort of blissing I was, on that. Just, I, you know, I mean, six months into it, and now I don't need it. But in the beginning, my body was craving it just like mad. And um, a couple of days, maybe a week into it, all of a sudden, you know, my feet are getting warm for the first time uh -huh. in like 15, 20 years. And uh, that's it. I used to need heavy wool socks to go to sleep even in summertime. That was it. They were warm. And the thing is, yeah. um, electron uh, glue at the end of the day is basically an electrical phenomenon. It's something that's positive att attaching to something negative, and that's the glue, the positive yeah, and negative. Yeah, we have this repulsive force of the negative pole or positive pole. Negative to positive, they glob on. Negative to negative, they repel, right? Exactly. So, you know, when the person doesn't have enough electrons, it's like, it's, uh, it's like eating, it's like drinking Elmer's glue. The body gets stuck on the inside. And if that goes on long enough, then that glue turns into the crystals that, you know, become uh -huh. kidney stones and make the body unable to hold the charge. But you've also just got the glue. And so once I was able to hold a charge, all the glue started breaking up. And if you, you know, why does someone have cold feet? Well, when you think of circulation, you think of arteries and veins, but 85% of the circulation is capillary. So when you open up the capillaries, the blood can go. So these capillaries, which are, half the size of a, of a, a blood cell, because the blood cell yeah. folds to get through them, they get glued up very easily. So when they yeah, all there's met- There's not a lot of room around the blood cell. That the blood cell essentially fills the entire diameter of the cell itself, right? Like it's- Yeah, and you get a little bit of a like positive that. static charge on there, and that blood cell is gonna just, like you can look at a capillary that's got 
positively charged and you can see the blood just sitting there. It doesn't yeah. even move. Maybe it wiggles a little bit. Yeah. Right. So yeah, you absolutely. put the negative charge back on, it all moves. And now my feet are warm, mm -hmm. you know, like there's a reason why young children blush and people don't blush as they get older because the capillary bed is globbing. It's getting glued up as they get older and they can't blush. But if you're healthy, you'll blush at any age if you're embarrassed. Right. Um, so I put that in my feet, get warm, tingling goes away. I'm like, wow, this, this is amazing. Um, so, uh, the circulation turned back on all the crystals came out. And then this thing is this little growth on my nose fell off that I'd had for like 20 years. Now, you know, you've got normal tissue and you've got cancerous tissue, but in between you've got stuff that could go either way, right? No, wrong tissue. Like, yeah. yeah, you got to kind of watch it, make sure it doesn't, doesn't go the wrong way. Anyway, I'm using this machine for a few weeks and all of a sudden I get this uh, dry spot on my nose. That, and then it falls out and leaves a hole behind it. And I think it goes through two cycles of that. And then the, heel, the hole eventually heals up. And I realized that was that little growth that I had. And it wasn't a tumor, but it wasn't healthy. Yes. Um, because if you take a, a, a healthy tissue and you lower its voltage, it becomes cancerous. But if you take a cancerous tissue and you raise its voltage, it stops dividing. So the electrical voltage is highly, and it's very important in terms of um, whether things grow properly or, or grow at all in the body that this shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, you know, you can look at the work of uh, Dr. Tennant that'll talk to you about electrons and voltage. Exactly. So that, that was what happened for me. You know, okay, this so, is, so first you pulsed. First you pulse, clear out the crystals. Right. That's, re, that's regenerate the battery, right? Because we're not like a cell Recondition, phone. Recondition really, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your cell phone battery goes out. You just buy another cell phone battery. You're not going to replace 37 trillion cells in your body. You can't. You have to recover them. Yep. So you recover those and then you can hold a charge. Now, why isn't grounding enough? The earth is a trickle charger. If you are, if your batteries are in good shape, then that's all you need is a trickle charge. But when the batteries get damaged, when our body gets crystallized, then grounding's not enough because it doesn't have enough of a charge to break through the crystals. Yeah. So you, you break through the crystals, you charge yourself up at high voltage for, depends, for me it took six months. And then eventually you get to the point where now all you need is to go outside, put your feet on the ground for a few minutes, touch a tree, you know, walk by the beach, and you, you can hold the charge. Um, let me tell you some things that happened to other people. One other woman in particular, she was a stage four uh, cancer patient, and very famous in, her, her, in the health field. And she's using it, and then she tells me that she, she's getting cups of worms out of her. Okay, the famous like, uh, earthworm trick, yeah. Oh yeah, like like liver like liver flukes this big are coming out of her, right? And you know you might say, oh, I don't want to have living, and they were alive when they came out. Now most worms you can't see; they're microscopic. But these things are big enough to actually see liver, and they were alive; they were wiggling. Yes. And it's important that they come out when they're alive because if you just kill them, and they die in the liver, then the liver is going to have to insist them, and that's a lot of better to have them choose to leave. So right. why would they leave? Right. And if you go on, if you go online to YouTube and you type in worms, electricity, you see, you know, country folk uh, who want to go fishing, they'll put car battery yeah. uh, on the ground with wires and yeah. electrify like, the ground classic, and the worms come out. Yeah. Worms don't like electricity. Well, yeah. composters, you know, most infections, parasites, viruses, fungus, bacteria, they're composting agents. Yeah. Ebola and influenza go after us, but most of them are just composters. So how do they know to compost us? Well, healthy tissue has a charge and dead tissue doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think when we're properly That's charged. That's a classic. The parasite lives in a depleted or weakened body and tissue. Right, because it's a food. It thinks it's food, right? So which it is. It's which it is. It's supposed to decompose me. So this, right. So this, I'm nearly dead. <laughs> yeah, this one with stage four cancer looked like food to all these worms, right? Mm -hmm. So you get the charge up high enough and the worms and the yeast and the fungus and bacteria are all like, well, this isn't a compost pile. Let's go elsewhere. Um, or, or even more importantly, this is not good. This is, this is destroying us. It's taking away from me, right? The yeah, not only isn't it food, but it's uncomfortable to be here, like them leaving the soil. They don't want to be. They actively go. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, now, another aspect of this is detox. And if you look at toxic metals, they all have a positive charge. Yeah. Right. So back in the 1800s, they were using electricity to pull metals out of people from lead poisoning. And you could actually, they put them in a bathtub full of electric, electricity, negative side of the electrons, 
and you could see the metals accumulate on the electrodes in the bath as they left the person. You can definitely use electricity to detoxify someone, but you can also make them more toxic if you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. so you got to be mindful of what kind of electricity and how you're pushing and pulling. Well, then you've got the whole antioxidant side of things, right? Like right, that's electrons are the, are the tiniest an antioxidant you could possibly imagine. They're, you know, point, they're pointless, they're dimensionless. And then if you have enough electrons, you can actually recharge all the, the antioxidants you're eating. So if you are eating this expensive antioxidant supplement and you don't have enough electrons, then you, the moment the, the antioxidant gives up its electron, that's it, it's done. But if you have electrons in you, then you can recycle that antioxidant a billion times a second right. and it makes it more powerful. Yeah, uh, this, this is an important point just to stress. Essentially aging, as I understand it, is the gradual decline of available electrons. The rusting of the human body is mm. seen to me as wrinkles and, uh, and f loss of function. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's certainly a part of it. So how do we get electrons into the body? We get them through our feet. So there's a pad that you can run through your feet. We get them through the air and there's a way with this machine to um, put electrons into the air that you breathe through a tube and you get them through food and water. So what I did is, um, do you remember the fad for making people are still probably doing it? A liposomal vitamin C. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, and you can I make your, it. Okay. And you can make your own with a blender if you want. Exactly. So I found, a, yeah, I found a way to use the machine to electrify the blades of a blender. And what you do is you put some water and some lethacin in, you blend it up, and the electrons go from the machine through the blade into the water, into the liposomes. And then when you drink it, you are getting all, all these electrons kind of get released internally inside the body. So you have, you have essentially pumped a whole lot of electrons into the food you're about to ingest. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any numbers, but I would say that one half a cup of electronic smoothie or electronic liposomes is like a month's worth of eating raw food. I mean, the amount of electrons in this is just off the hook. Okay. Awesome. But the last, the last thing I want to I want to mention is, you know, 5G is uh, something that's going to be more and more of an issue as time goes on. Yeah. You know how they're cutting down all the trees to make way for 5G. Yeah, I mean, in England, you know, they're, they're really upset because they've got these beautiful, you know, 100 year old trees lining the boulevards and they're cutting them all down. So for 5G now- So, so that there's a direct line of sight of well, non interference, right? That's what they say, right? Um, I think that there's two aspects to it. Yes, mechanically, the tree blocks line of sight, but you know, you- How does your, it do it? Yeah, I think part of it is the electron, the tree is grounded to the earth. And so the tree is basically, if you could, if you had the ability to see electrical charge, you would see this cloud of electrons around the living tree. Yeah, in fact, tree pumps negative ions into the air. That's why being in a forest is a fun experience because it's got such a high percentage of these negative ions in the air. Even more so if you get, once you get the, elect, uh, the crystals out and you go to the forest, you can fully accept the charge from it. Mm -hmm. So you've got these trees and they've got these clouds of electrons around them. Now, there's something called the Compton effect or Compton scattering in physics. So when you get um, energy, electromagnetic energy, all the way up to x-rays, but definitely in the, in the microwave range, and it hits something um, and it hits an electron on that thing, the electron can wiggle, absorb the hit, wiggle, and then radiate the energy back out. Uh -huh. So I think what's going on with the trees is the 5G hits the tree hits the electrons outside around it like a force field the electrons take it absorb it re-radiate it out compton scattering and that's what's knocking out the 5g if they were to kill the tree and i hope they wouldn't do that either then it the, the, the dead tree wouldn't have the same effect as a living tree mm -hmm. so yeah because when, 5g does go through walls right well it has to so and the wall's not living yeah so right yeah okay so, so it's the living things that they're trying to kill. Yeah. Um, so what I thought, what I believe is possible is that the more charge we have on us, the more of a force field against 5G we have. That when we have a, a, a coating of electrons on our body because the crystals are out and we're able to, and we charge ourselves and we keep that shield up, then yes, the 5G is a problem. But when it hits us, our body, it hits the free electrons in the body, they wiggle and radiate it out again via Compton scattering. It's not, it's not a perfect protection, but I think that the more charged we are, 
uh, the more resistant we are to things like 5G and all the other stuff that's out there. Right, that, that's valid and, and valuable. So not only, I was only thinking in the terms of damage, right, where the radiation comes in and upsets the normal function of things and it will cause me to just age faster or function less normally as I would have otherwise. But you're actually explaining that not only that, but you're actually become an active um, sort of like Obi-Wan Kenobi um, invisible to the radiation or at least resistant to the radiation because it doesn't penetrate and stay. Yeah, if you have enough free electrons, I think you will be able to make, take advantage of the Compton effect. And basically it shields up. It's like, you know, yeah, the stuff's coming in, but you know, it's not, it's not as much of a problem because you can bounce, you can bounce it off of you. Yeah. That's powerful. Okay. And so this would require what a 15 minute daily session after your six months of supercharging. Uh, so when I first was using it, I was addicted to it. You know, you couldn't get me off the machine for six hours a day. So what would you do while working your feet on it? Everything, working while resting, while sitting, everything. I just, you would, I mean, you know, my partner was like, what are you doing? Take a break. I'm like, you don't understand. I, my body wants this really right. badly. So now on this machine, I see on the front panel, you have this knob that's got this. This lets you know that it's running. Uh, this is um, an auto protect so that if you touch someone when you're using it, you don't shock them. It'll turn itself off automatically. Mm -hmm. And these are the settings. So, you know, the lowest setting is you go all the way to the top. That's where you might start in the beginning. And once, you know, your urine is no longer full of crystals and it's, you know, not cloudy and junky, uh, you can slowly start turning it down and down and down and down until you get to the lowest setting. So everybody's different. You know, someone who's 80 years old is going to need more than someone who's eight. Um, but as a general idea, you're going to pulse it until your urine is clear or until, you know, you feel like you don't need it anymore, that pulsing, you know, yeah. and then you're just going to, it's like saying, it's like someone saying, how much, how much water do I drink or how much sleep do I need? I'm you'll know, enough. you're going to feel it. You're going to, you're going to say, you'll get on and be like, Oh my God, I feel so relaxed and so peaceful and so good. And when that stops happening, when you are on it and don't feel anything, then you're done. Yeah, now, you're full, your glass is full. Yeah. Right. And then what will happen is you, you can go a day and then you'll need it. And then you go two days. And then now I'm like, I can go for a week without it and I'm fine. Awesome. So, yeah, because my body can hold a charge now. I had an experience in my life like that in this thing that we call the star chamber. Mm. I went and had myself reset. Like, it's like it pumps... It pumps the capacitors full of life force. Yeah. But anyway, so I came back from the treatment, which lasted maybe four or five hours. Wow. And for the next six weeks, I had abundant life force. Like I could stay up to 2 a.m. full tilt and be refreshed by 7 in the morning and just keep going. But after six weeks of this, I was back to the way it was. Yeah. I spent, I spent the capital that was given to me. So yeah, it's been a year in the making, and the machine uh, will be ready uh, February 2020, which is a few weeks from now. And I mean, I am finally now, you know, six months after having used it, at the point where I use it, I don't use it, it's fine. But it took a long time to get there. I, I had a, so, I had what, we had 37 trillion cells in the body. They've all got to get. Cleared up. So when I first buy it, I will probably hog it for the first three months, six months, and then then I will be willing to share it with others, right? Well, um, you know, uh, you can actually have a couple of people use it at once. So if, if I were to use it um, and I'm sitting on a, on a couch, you know, my partner would sit next to me and she'd hold my hand or just rest up against me and then we're both getting it. Okay. Yeah, so basically what it's doing is you know, the earth is, is, the sun is the source of the electrons. The earth is the, the battery that holds it. Mm -hmm. And what the device does is it pumps it out of the earth and into us. Because like I said, uh, just touching the earth doesn't have enough voltage to break up the, the crystals. Yeah, this is an important piece of insight because this is I, it. I, have, I have had so many people tell me, well, I've done this earthing or I've done this grounding and uh, what, what are they talking about? It just, Don't notice anything, right? Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, this people definitely notice. 
And, um, and I like the fact that six months into it, then I don't need it. I, I like the fact that I'm not, I don't, uh, I don't require it, that what I needed to do was to um, have it bring me back to, to normal and then think to myself, okay, maybe I should sleep on cotton sheets and wear cotton clothing. And okay, maybe I should once, you know, when I go outside, put my, you know, put my hand against a tree and hey, maybe don't be that close to electronics all the time. So. Yeah, okay. How would you compare this method to the PEMF, post electronic? Sure. And my other favorite, my other favorite technology. Um, the PEMF is a tool and fantastic for uh, chronic wound healing. You know, someone's got um, damaged Achilles tendon or maybe some bladder pain or shoulder, whatever. It's fantastic. Uh, this is more like water, food, sleep. It's a fundamental thing. Now, at the end of the day, we have to heal ourselves. So a person gets cut and they go to the ER and they get sewn up or glued, however they do it. The surgeon doesn't go into every cell and create the scarring and then dissolve the scarring and create new tissue and bring in stem cells. It doesn't do that. The surgeon just approximates the wound and the body does the rest, right? Assuming it has all the raw materials, the food, the electrons, right? The electrons are the motor of the body, the motor of the cell. Everything that takes place, everything that takes place in a cell happens because of electric force. You could say that in order for the PEMF to work, it's gonna, you're still going to need the electrons to do the work. The PEMF is sort of like stitching, right? It's this external force doing something to help you. But at the end of the day, you still need the resources inside your body, the good nutrition and the electrons and okay. to be able to go and do that work. So you do PEMF on someone and they don't have enough electrons. It's like stitching someone together, but the, without the body having the ability to fix it, yeah. right? Or, or so, you know, it's like, it's like maybe like holding the wound together with your hands, but then you let it go and, it's, and it opens up again. So the electrons are the primary. And, you know, you get people who, who got situations they can't fix and they try everything under the sun. Well, but if they don't have the necessary internal uh, capacity to heal, it doesn't matter what they'll do. And if they have the capacity to heal, lots of things will work. Mm -hmm. If someone, let's say someone has an, an injury you know, to, car, uh, to a tendon, right? And they have enough electrons, PEMF can work. Um, you know, collagen can work. If you have, the, right, so, you know, there are lots of things that can trigger the body to heal if the body has a capacity to do it. Well, raw food is part of it, and walking barefoot is part of it, and sleeping is part of it, and, and so on. But this is the important part that, that uh, I want to stress one more time, which is until you clear the crystals, until you punch through the body's ability to actually absorb these energies, you're not even going to have a lot of success. Mm, mm. Um, that's what I heard you tell me. All right. Yeah. As, yeah. This, is, this is a big aha for me. And then the whole 5G thing, you know, it's, you know, what else can we do? The only alternative is to wear a complete suit made out of aluminum. And we're not going to do that. So, but the idea that nature is already, I mean, they inadvertently told us how to fight 5G. I, I hate, I'm very disappointed that we're, that all these beautiful old trees are being cut down. But the good thing that can come out of it is they, they showed us their, their, um, their weak spot. They showed us that Be a living a electrical field will <laughs> stop this. Yeah, be a tree. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let me, if you've got that field, you've got that charge, then, you know, the 5G is just... Psh. Yeah, but to be a tree, you need to be grounded. <laughs> and you need to get the crystals out. So it's sort of like, you know, yeah, so that you can actually absorb and hold this stuff. It's, you know, ideas come and then people kind of tap into it. So, sure, I'm not surprised if some other people in other countries are thinking the same thoughts. Um, great. More the merrier. All right. It's available at Life Enthusiast and at Remedy Link. Spencer, this has been delightful. Thank you very much. This is Martin for Life Enthusiast, restoring vitality to you and to the planet, keeping to our mission.